everybody, welcome back to Young Adults Home Groups. Glad to be with you again. Uh, we have finished talking our way through the uh, those few chapters in the book of John. And we're going to go in a new direction tonight. I think for a few weeks, Lord willing, we will spend some time talking through some psalms together. And the way I, I hope to do it is each night to give you uh, not just one psalm, but maybe two or even three psalms to sort of read together compare, let them sort of speak to each other and inform each other. And so tonight, we're going to look at Psalm 45, Psalm 2, and Psalm 110. I actually have uh, the text all printed out if you're, if you're group leaders. I don't know if they wanted to print that out for you. And questions on each psalm. And I wanted the questions to get you into discussing the individual psalms. We'll start with Psalm 45 talk through that, and then add in Psalm 2 and talk about how those two connect, and then add in Psalm 110 and talk about how all three of them uh, work together and what they have to say. They are what are sometimes called messianic or I think even enthronement psalms. I think that gets thrown around. The songbook of inspired songs collected in ancient Israel included psalms written to and about the king. And of course, ancient Israel, uh, even the divided kingdom, Judah, Israel, was a monarchy. And so they had a king that they could talk about and write hymns around the reign of that king. But of course, in Israel, much more than that was going on. And so, as a lot of you know, in these monarch psalms, you end up with things that, that look all the way down the ages to uh, the one we know as Jesus, and then even past what we know of him, into what's still future for us and was definitely future for them of the kingdom of Christ that is coming. And so talking about that king, Jesus as the king, either as he comes to usher in his kingdom or even as he sits on the throne of his kingdom. And so some of these poems, these songs look down into the future in ways that are uh, almost too good for words, except of course God did put them into words. And so uh, I'm going to have you guys just read them and think about them together and think about the king tonight. I chose these psalms a few weeks ago because I just had been thinking about them on my own. And then as I was preparing for this last week, I realized that they are really perfect things to read on the night before the election of 2020. And I want to encourage you, as we've been doing since June, to use this time together not to further add to all of the thinking and talking and stressing about politics and the particular election tomorrow, but in, in, instead to actually unplug our minds from that, almost like get out of that pool and for, you know, an hour and a half or so tonight, jump into another pool and swim in different water. And the water that we're going to swim in in these Psalms is not the pool of stress and anxiety and arguing and worry and anger and voting and conniving, but the pool of a time when God has solved all of those problems and shut down all of that talk and he sits on the throne uh, unquestioned as the ruler of the whole earth. And so, uh, you know, Psalm 2 actually, I should say, actually does have to do with our time, but is speaking about the times that we live in, in view of that coming time that the Lord is going to enthrone this king. And so I just invite you guys to, let's just for a second, unplug from where we're at this week in terms of uh, our, our culture, our nation, and plug into a, a much more important um, political situation, the government of the king. Jesus Christ is the one who's going to occupy the throne and even now does rule and what he's like and who he is and who his people are. Those are the kinds of things that bring health and strength and peace to the minds of the believer. And so let's just meditate on that together. Let's pray. Um, I do ask a few questions on the sheet about what these Psalms say to our culture. And so that would be a good way to come back into our today. And our current situation, which is this, which is to think together and talk together about what do these kingly enthronement psalms 
what message do they have for the world we live in? And to, to look at our world from the perspective of Christ and his kingship as opposed to feel like we're stuck in our world looking forward to Christ and his kingship. The scripture invites us, I think, to switch places and say, why don't we look at back at our culture standing in the firm, rooted, peaceful strength of the kingship of Jesus? And that's what Psalm 2 is doing. Psalm 2's perspective is looking from heaven down to earth. And so we're invited to, to take that perspective. Um, one last encouragement. I'm going to put this on the blog, but I think I'll just say it to you guys. Uh, we have a podcast that's going up for you tomorrow to listen to. It's specifically for Election Day. It's another thing just to help us get our minds washed in scriptures. I uh, encourage you, if you have time, to listen to that. Maybe even have your Bible open while you listen to it, to Psalm 62, and think through it. I also want to encourage you, um, I've been thinking about the book of Galatians and the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is contrasted, if you look at that passage, maybe tonight or tomorrow, with the works of the flesh. And the works of the flesh include, you know, fighting, dissension, outbursts of wrath, all the things that are dominating our culture right now and our world. The fruit of the Spirit, though, as you guys know, is the love and the joy and the peace and all the things listed there. And I was just thinking, and just put this out to you, what if tomorrow it was the fruit of the Spirit that dominated our lives, no matter what happened? Whatever kind of line you got to stand in, whatever kind of news you got to hear, watch, whatever's going on tomorrow night as everyone's obsessed with watching election returns and all that. What about the fruit of the Spirit being the thing that dominates our inner environment and what comes out of us? And so, you know, we have the opportunity tomorrow to have love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness, gentleness and self-control being what's filling us, which would be great, right? and what's coming out of us. And we have the same opportunity on Wednesday, Thursday. And so just an exhortation, let's be people of the fruit of the Spirit uh, tomorrow and on into the, the near future, because who knows what's going to happen. But we know that uh, Jesus is going to be the one on the throne no matter what. So God bless you guys, and I will be seeing you soon, hopefully. Bye.